In this video, I will explain you the commonalities and differences between the correlation, regression and the causality. As you already know from our video on correlation, correlation analysis examines the relationship of variables. One question might be, is there a correlation between the age at which a child speaks his or her first sentences and later school success? The correlation analysis shows the two characteristics are interrelated. Now it could be investigated whether one variable can be used to predict the other one. Thus, school success should be predicted by the age at which a child speaks his or her first sentences using regression. If there is a correlation between the age at which a child speaks his or her first sentences and later school success, we can even speak of a causal relationship in this case. For example, that the age at which a child speaks his first sentences influences later school success. In this case, it is very easy because we have a temporal separation. It is clear that later school success cannot influence the age at which a child speaks his or her first sentences. But beware, it's not always that easy. For this, we look at the next example. Let's say at the end of the school time, you make an intelligence test with pupils and ask them about their high school grade. After you have done your survey and analyzed the data, it will surely turn out that there is a correlation between intelligence and the high school grade. But now comes the big question mark. Is there a causal relationship? Of course, we could now simply set up a regression model and define intelligence as an independent variable and high school grade as a dependent variable and predict the high school grade with intelligence. But with that, we have not yet proven causality. But first, let's look at the question what does causality exactly mean? Causality means that there is a clear cause-effect relationship between two variables. A common mistake in the interpretation of statistics is that when a correlation exists, a causality is inferred. Here I have a suitable example for you. The American statistician Daryl Huff found a negative correlation between the number of head lice and the body temperature of the inhabitants of a group of islands. A negative correlation means that people with many lice generally have a lower body temperature than people with few lice. The inhabitants of the island have concluded that since lice reduce fever, they are good for health. So this would mean that lice have an influence on the body temperature. But in reality, the causality is the other way around. In an experiment, it could be proven that high fever drives away the lice. So the high temperature is the cause and not the effect. Therefore, we cannot speak of a causal relationship just because there is a correlation. For causality, there are exact preconditions. But what are the conditions for causality? When can we speak of a causal relationship? There are two requirements for causality. First, there is a significant relationship, that is, a significant correlation. This precondition is of course easy to test. We simply take the correlation coefficient and check if it is significantly different from zero. The second condition can be satisfied in two ways. First, it is satisfied if there is a temporal ordering of the variables. So variable A was collected temporally before variable B. Furthermore, the second condition can be fulfilled if there is a theoretically founded and plausible theory in which direction the causal relationship goes. If none of the two is true, 
For example, there is neither a temporal order nor can the causality be justified by a well-founded theory, then we can only speak of a relationship but never of causality. For example, it cannot be said that variable E influences variable B or vice versa. Let's take a look at our example again. In the first example, where the question is whether the age at which a child speaks the first sentences influences later school success, there is clearly a temporal component. The measurement of when the first sentences are spoken is clearly before the measurement of later school success. The relationship cannot be the other way around. If one has a great school success by a lot of tutoring, this has of course no influence on when the first sentences are spoken. On the other hand, if we measure intelligence and the high school average at the same time, we do not have this temporal component. In order to be able to make a statement here, there must be a well-founded theory of which variable influences which. If there is not, no statement about causality can be made. There is certainly a high correlation between intelligence and high school grade. But it could also be that people who study a lot have good grades and have acquired the knowledge to do well in an intelligence test. So the intelligence and the high school grade were determined at the same time. Of course you can avoid this by taking the intelligence test before school starts. Then you can be sure that the school had no influence on the intelligence test. This of course requires a lot of time and effort because you get the results many years later and the same people have to be interviewed at two different times. Now you have a good overview of what causality means and we can go into more detail about regression. Check out my video on simple and multiple linear regression for that. I look forward to seeing you back in a bit.